Well, let's talk more about this uh, intelligence report that has uh, been uh, groundbreaking uh, for, for some. James Dorsey is a senior fellow at the S. Rajatnam School of International Studies. He's equally a senior fellow at the Middle, Institute, uh, Middle East Institute. Excuse me, uh, James, thanks very much for speaking uh, to France 24. Uh, no direct sanctions then, we've been saying this afternoon, for MBS. This is something that's clearly been criticised by human rights uh, campaigners who are dismayed. They feel that the US should have gone uh, further on this. There will though nonetheless be consequences for MBS. He was trying, uh, by all accounts, to improve uh, his image across the world. Walk us through some of those consequences, if you will, James. MBS's uh, reputation has been damaged for the last years. He was hoping to repair that with uh, a little bit too late, uh, or too little too late uh, measures on human rights, which really didn't amount to very much and with uh, recognition by the international business community. You recently had an investment summit that was very well attended in Riyadh. I think that what's happened now is severely set that back. It's clear that Mohammed bin Salman will not be welcome anywhere in the Western world. And I would imagine that a lot of people outside of the, uh, the democracies will think twice at this moment to want to be that publicly identified with him. We'll have to see how Western business responds, but certainly association with Mohammed bin Salman by Western business has become a lot more difficult. I mean, you touched on something there which is interesting. I mean, ahead of the release of this report, uh, Joe Biden's administration has spoken a lot about universal uh, human rights. This is clearly a message for Saudi Arabia that, you know, the status quo uh, cannot uh, continue. Do you think that there will be other countries that have uh, questionable human rights records that will be uh, worried uh, about uh, the revelations in, in this report? I think we're seeing two things. One is this was a message to Saudi Arabia first and foremost. But it was a message to many in the Middle East, primarily the Iranians, whose human rights record is abominable, uh, Egypt, uh, but also Israel and Turkey, of course. And with Israel, there are multiple issues that are potentially uh, divergent between Jerusalem and Washington. So uh, I think others will be watching this very closely. I think the other thing that it signals is uh, Biden and, and Blinken have both talked about a recalibration of relationships with the, with Saudi Arabia. I think what we're going to see is a recalibration of uh, the U.S. commitment in in the Middle East. Now that doesn't mean that the Middle East is with that the United States is withdrawing. It's not, but it does want to recalibrate its commitment, and we'll want to see others more engaged. I mean, do you think that the recent uh, withdrawal of support by the U.S. for uh, this Saudi-led uh, uh, intervention in Yemen is a, a sign of, of things to come in terms what of U.S. I think commitment? The, what I think that the United States wants to see is an, uh, an evolution in the region, Yemen being one of those issues, in which at least conflicts are being managed so that they don't spin out of control. Uh, and uh, a degree of stability can be returned. Yemen was the first move on this uh, in terms of appointing one, an American uh, special envoy to negotiate. Uh, uh, the, the arms embargo, as far as uh, offensive weapons are concerned, not as far as defensive weapons that would defend Saudi Arabia against attack from beyond its own borders. But ultimately, I think that we are moving towards a more multilateral approach uh, towards security in the Middle East, in which other players or regional players will be far more involved. Other external players could be uh, involved. But the United States ultimately would be the military backbone. All right, James Dorsey, uh, speaking to us uh, from Singapore. Uh, I'm afraid we don't have any more time. Thank you uh, for speaking to France 24.